vacation. Um, no, I didn't get back because I didn't go anywhere. I stayed home, but I took two weeks off and I chilled. Uh, I watched like an insane number of YouTube videos. I rekindled my relationship with Scandal. Uh, we might have to talk about that in another vlog. And, uh, and you know, I went for walks. I did puzzles, I read books. I hung out with my family. And it was mostly great, but it was also a little anxiety producing. Um, personal confession, if you don't know, I have a generalized anxiety disorder, which in a nutshell means that my brain and my body get really stressed out about things that for a lot of other people wouldn't be stressful at all, like being on vacation. It's just, it's, it's me, that's my, that's my brain. Um, you know, it's, it's fine, love yourself, love yourself, Nadine. love yourself. I love myself. I don't always understand myself. And I try, you know, because the more I understand myself, the, the better I feel. And this past couple of weeks, when I was feeling the anxiety, I was like, what is this? Like, why do I get stressed out when I'm doing things that make me happy? I don't have any big profound answers, but I did realize something. And I realized that yes, there's something about giving myself pleasure, not talking about pleasure in the masturbation way, although I'm not, not talking about that either. There's something about giving myself or allowing myself pleasure that kind of freaks me out a bit and makes me uncomfortable. Uh, it's ironic because one of my most cherished and passionate beliefs as a sexuality educator is that pleasure is an essential component of sexuality and should be but isn't a really important aspect of sex education especially with kids and youth and one of the things you know i really want to do with my work is encourage us as adults to help kids see sexuality as a potentially pleasurable experience in their lives so it's like kind of like a wah, wah, wah moment when I realized like, hey, pleasure is actually something that I struck personally struggle with. Ah, I have to work through all of this now. So like I said, I don't have any answers. Just these are just things I've, I've noticed. And I'm going to throw them out there because maybe you've noticed similar things too. Maybe you have advice for me or some insight that I don't have and we can like help each other out. Yeah, we can learn from each other. When I do experience something pleasurable, I feel the need to justify it, even if it's just to myself, um, beyond simply I'm doing this because I, it makes me feel good. I'll be out and I'll see something, you know, something pretty that I really like and, you know, I have plenty, like I have the money for it, it's fine, I can buy it and I'll start having all these questions going through my head like, oh, do I really deserve this? You know, have I been working hard? What, like, what is, I need to reward myself for something. What is this a reward for? Instead of just saying like, I like it, I can afford it, I want it, it will make me happy, I'm gonna buy it. And it's not like I, you know, deprive myself and don't let myself have nice things. Uh, you know, oftentimes, eventually I will buy it or I will give myself a nice thing. But then when I tell people about it, the story around it is, I saw it and I needed to have it, that I actually used the word need, like I was gonna die if I didn't get it. It's like I'm ashamed to just say, I wanted this and got it. Even though I said it wasn't about sex, I'm actually going to bring it back to sex, that in my sex life with my partner, it was, it, there were a lot of years where I felt really internally conflicted about the sex we were having together because it was like, I love you and you're amazing and I'm committed to you, but that's not what makes me want to have sex with you most of the time. Most of the time I want to have sex with you because I'm horny and I'm attracted to you and I want to get off. And I was like, but those aren't the right reasons to have sex, ah. And now as someone who identifies as a feminist, um, I find that a lot of times when I do self-indulgent things, I often categorize it in my brain as self-care, like I'm doing self-care, or 
you know, I am doing these pleasurable things, but it's a revolutionary act because as a woman, we aren't, as women, we aren't necessarily given a lot of permission to, to experience pleasure as, as a mother, you know, mothers aren't often given a lot of permission to experience pleasure. So this is like revolutionary self-care. Sometimes that is what it is. And I don't mean to diminish the importance of self-care or the validity of self-care because I think that actually is a very valid experience um, for me and for a lot of other people and I think that the political aspects of pleasure are, are real and relevant but I just find it interesting now that I realize that it can never just be I'm just making myself happy because Something else I've recently become aware of is that I often don't have a lot of awareness when I'm doing pleasurable things. I have become aware of my unawareness. What? Example, and I'm pretty sure some of you have done this too. I see something that is delicious, that has not a lot of nutritional value. Piece of cake, chips, french fries, whatever. And I'm just like, I want to eat it because it's going to be delicious. And I get it. And instead of being like, this is going to be a delicious, wonderful experience and really focusing in on what I'm eating, I eat it really fast. It's like, I can't tolerate the pleasure of it or I don't want to acknowledge the pleasure of eating the thing that I'm eating. I think that people sometimes have sex this way. I have had sex this way sometimes too. Where it's like, okay, I'm gonna do it, but I can't be fully in the moment because too much pleasure, pleasure overload, I don't know, or I'm feeling like weird that I'm just having pleasure with no other purpose to it other than I feel good. Why? Oh. Like I said, I don't have any answers, but that does not mean that I do not have some theories brewing. I have some hypotheses that I am working on. One of which is that uh, some of this may be, some of this is probably cultural. Um, ideas that I've just absorbed from living in North America and I don't feel that traditionally uh, pleasure and indulgence have been, are not valued highly in our culture, that I think they're often seen as selfish and I think that pleasure and indulgence are often seen as a little bit dangerous. Like, okay, if you're just gonna do stuff because it makes you feel good, what's to stop you from doing the stuff that makes you feel good all the time? And we can't function as a society if everybody only does what makes them feel good at every minute of their lives. Like you, it's true, you just can't. Like, you, you've gotta have some, some checks and balances there. And I think I've got it in my head some place that pleasure isn't substantial and it's not going to bring you like true happiness and fulfillment and that pleasure is just a thing that you know one should stumble upon every once in a while like a pleasant surprise but you know it's not something that you purposely seek out that people who purposely seek out pleasure are you know, they're, they're shallow and they're unfulfilled and they're not really happy. But one of my newest hypotheses is that that is in fact bullshit <laughs> because, and I'm speaking again, just anecdotally, I haven't like done research on this, but anecdotally speaking, when I look at the people in my life who seem to be sort of pleasure driven and and seek out pleasure and try to live their lives with as much happiness and joy and enjoyment as possible, um, those are the people in my life who are the most content, um, who seem far less anxious than I seem. And it's not that they don't have hard times, it's not that they don't work hard, it's not, these are not irresponsible people. A lot of these people, you know, are thriving and they're wonderful and they do what they have to do but they enjoy their lives and they seem, you know, happier and healthier for it. So, you know, I'm 40 years old and statistically I'm almost halfway through my life and I don't have, like, I don't, I don't have, I don't have time. Like, what is the point? What is the point 
of denying myself the available pleasures. I have, the past two years of my life has like, have actually been really, really difficult. And what I'm realizing is that the difficult stuff in life will always be there and it will always find you. So why wouldn't I try to have as much happiness and joy as I possibly can while I'm here? It's gonna be a process because even though I'm kind of, like things are clicking in my, in my brain and the like thinking intellectual part of my brain, it often takes like the rest of me time to catch up and to integrate these ideas. It's just, this is how I am. Um, so I, I expect that over the next little while I'm gonna have like some conflicting emotions about it. And then professionally, um, I really want to delve into some more research and reading around pleasure and where our cultural ideas about pleasure come from and, you know, what are like the neurochemical effects of pleasure in the brain and the body and all of those things. So that's, that's, it's on my mind. Um, in the comments below, let me know what are some things that you do for pleasure, for just like pure enjoyment? What do you love? What do you love to eat? What do you love to do? Where do you love to go? Tell me, I would love to know that. All right, I think that's all the vlogging that I have to do for today, but I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be coming back to this topic repeatedly over the next little while. Uh, I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye. But did you know that these physical changes can happen in our bodies when we are not sexually aroused? And the term for that is arousal non-concordance.